Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to do an interesting comparison. We're taking an object, basically a point mass, which is attached to a string of length 1.4 meters, and it's rotated in a circular path. Now, the velocity of the object is 2 meters per second. We're going to calculate the kinetic energy in two ways. We're going to calculate the translational kinetic energy. He said, well, wait a minute. How can you calculate the translational kinetic energy because it's rotating around in a circle? So shouldn't it only have rotational kinetic energy? Well, it does, and we're going to calculate the rotational kinetic energy as well, but we're also going to do it in terms of the translational kinetic energy. After all, we have an object that's moving at 2 meters per second along a circular path, which is still translational motion. It doesn't have to be straight path, it could be circular path. So let's calculate the kinetic energy in both ways and see what we get. First, the kinetic energy translational, which is equal to 1 half mv squared. This would be equal to 1 half times the mass of the object, which is 4 kilograms, times the velocity, 2 meters per second quantity squared. And that would be 4 times 4, which is 16, divided by 2, which is 8 joules. So 8 joules is the translational kinetic energy. Now what if we calculated the rotational kinetic energy? Kinetic energy, rotational, is equal to the equivalent equation, but now in rotational units, is 1 half times the moment of inertia times omega squared. That means we have to find the moment of inertia, and we have to find the angular velocity. The moment of inertia of a point mass going around in circles is equal to mr squared, and we also know that the tangential velocity is equal to r times omega, which means omega is equal to v over r. We can go ahead and plug that in here. This is equal to 1 half times i, and i is equal to mr squared, and then we multiply that times omega squared, which is v divided by r quantity squared. So let's go ahead and plug in these values. Now, maybe what we can do is, hmm, they gave me an idea. But no, I'll go ahead and keep working it out and see what happens. So let's plug in the units. So we have 1 half times the mass of the object, which is 4 kilograms, times r squared. r is 1.4 quantity squared times velocity squared, which is 2 squared, divided by r squared, which is 1.4 squared. Now notice that we have a 1.4 squared, a 1.4 squared, so 1 half times 4, which is 2 times 2 squared, which is also 8 joules. Now this is interesting. It doesn't matter which technique we use to find the kinetic energy of the object. We can either use translational motion, and find the kinetic energy simply by using 1 half mv squared. In this case, that's equal to 8 joules. Or we could do it in another way. We can do it using circular motion. And we can say that kinetic energy rotational is equal to 1 half i omega squared. And we'll plug in the values. We get the exact same result. That is actually what we should expect. It doesn't matter how we calculate something. We should always get the same result. But you can see here that you can look at this motion in two different ways. Either you look at it as translational motion, 1 half mv squared, or as rotational motion, 1 half i omega squared, and you should get the exact same value for the kinetic energy either way. Now, that doesn't mean that the total energy is the sum of the two. It's either one or the other. But in other words, in this particular case, the total kinetic energy is equal to the translational kinetic energy or therefore equal to the rotational kinetic energy. It's not the sum in this case. It's not like we have an object that's both moving in a translational sense and rotating on its axis. The rotational motion can also be interpreted as translational motion. And so therefore we can do it in two different ways, but it's the same total energy. The total energy in this case is just the eight joules. And that's how that's done.